Hello and welcome to my new video. Today we'll continue printing series for my Kodak 500T. It will be really cool Christmas shot and it was shot in door and I want to make the perfect white balance in door. Also today we will make a chemistry for Array 4 and finish up my stock chemistry and I basically need to order a new kit. Before printing I remove the dust from the negative and from the glass carrier and check if I don't have any type of Newton rings on the glass. After selecting proper magnification on my negative, I will crop down the sides to keep up the black area around the photo. I personally think sometimes it looks a little bit better and I also really like the paper ratio of 20 by 25 but in the same time I really like the ratio of the 35mm film. And focusing on this film sometimes can be a little bit tricky. Because as you can see, the grain or the structure of the film is crazy small and crisp. And the next step, I will use my test printer and make an exposure test strips and develop them with the normal procedure. And I usually use one minute for developer and one minute for bleach picks. So let's remove the old chemistry from the bottles. And as you can see, the developer is completely black. And it's a good sign that you need to change the developer. And usually I almost all the time exhaust the developer first and the bleach fix also kind of looks good for several runs later. But because I have a kit which is symmetrical chemistry, so I have exactly the same volume of developer and the bleach fix, I just exchange both of them at the same time. I'm making solutions in these chemical cylinders, what I have in the kit of Yobo. And usually they look really ugly from outside because of the hard water what I'm using for my filling. But inside they completely clean and once in a while I clean the whole system with the whole furniture around the thing. And keep in mind because I make a fresh solution it will be not in the temperature of the water what I have. But because I modify my CPE too I have a temperature prop which I will put inside the bottle and from there I will just wait until the temperature will stabilize on 35 degrees. I stored solutions in this 600 milliliter Yoba bottles. They are usually not really cheap, but they far better in quality than the bottles from the cheapest source what you can find in a photo impacts or size of like this. And I just really like how they look. They are not perfect, but best what I can find on the market at the moment. Ratios for developer and the ratios for bleach fix exactly the same. So I repeat the procedure in a different cylinder and I dilute it and also put it in the 600 ml bottle and wait until the both solutions will heat up to the final temperature. Sometimes I'm just thinking I need to stick with the one brand and so far I think the tetanol is one of the best what I use, at least in Europe and it's never give me any huge problems. And I think C41 chemistry from Tetanol really good and the Array 4 kit from Tetanol is also really fine and at least it looks more concentrated than the Adox kit what I have here. So now let's prepare our paper and let's make the final adjustments and I will just pour my developer inside the cup what I have in the lead of this development drum. And when I close the lid and make a rotation horizontally of this drum, development starts. I using multi-timer app on my phone and I just count one minute per each development and one minute for bleach fix. And after this procedure everything is done and I make one rinse with the pure water for my test prints and two rinses usually for final print. It's hard to find distilled water as I said before in the previous videos, but I think I will just switch to the filter to one, at least it's a little bit better than the just pure water from the tap. I used the same settings what I have on the enlarger as a starting point and as you see from this test strip it's a little bit far off and unfortunately I don't really see in this direction. But the good point, I actually know which exposure I need to use. On F11, I use 10 seconds of exposure for this magnification. And it should be sufficient for my results. And from there, I will start to make adjustments in color. If I don't know the direction which I want to go, I usually make all the prints at once. And I have quite simple strategy. I put the enlarger in the settings of 60-60-0 with the settings what I find for exposure. 
And from there, because I have a six points inside my test printer, I start calibrating my paper with the exactly same settings and changing only one channel. I start with the yellow channel from 30 points up with a 10 increment step. On the next test strip, I make the 60 back to yellow and from there I just change only magenta channel. I put magenta on 30 and make exactly the same steps as for the yellow channel, but on the magenta channel up. And on the cyan channel, I put everything to 60, 60 and put from zero and makes exactly the same steps up in the magenta channel. Usually this is quite simple strategy and sometimes you just see the perfect example of the color in these test strips. And I think it's just much more reliable than to print small stripes and waste the paper and don't really make the metric step. So let's pull up all the strips from my drum and check what is the results we have. Also, it's a good idea to write down the color on the back side of the paper, which channel you're actually changing. Because sometimes, for example, in my case, it's not really easy to say which strip is which channel, especially with the steps of 10. But if you know how the color correction works, it can be quite easy. If you look from the left, you can see I changing color from yellow to blue. And if you take a look on the middle strip, it's from purple to green. And the last strip is a cyan channel going to red. And sometimes if you're not experienced, it's quite easy to misunderstood the shifts between the yellow and red, especially if they close enough in your picture. From these test strips, you can easily see that the cyan channel is not the channel what we want to move. And the zero setting actually looks quite nice. And if you take a look on a yellow channel, the 60 settings looks a little bit too warm. And if we just put 70 or 80 there, it should be fine. And there's the same on a magenta channel. You can easily see that we don't need to change anything beyond the 60 points. So our final settings is 80, 60, 0. With a 10 seconds of exposure on the F11. And from there, Let's print the small test print to be sure that our color is correct. And I really like the color balance because sometimes you can get it a little bit too cool and a little bit too red or too green. And if I need it later, I will make the final adjustments. But keep in mind, we need to take a look on the whites in the shot and from there make a calibration. And I think it's one of the easiest thing. And the test print looks brilliantly fine and the white is white and especially the blues and reds. With the color printing it's quite important to keep the balance of the colors, otherwise you're losing the color contrast of the picture and your colors look blunt. And this picture is a great example because you have a sharp blue color there and at the same time you have a warmth of the light and in the background you have reds. And you need to keep all of these colors in balance, otherwise your blue will be not really sharp. It will be with a yellowish cast and you're losing the contrast and you're losing the quality of the picture itself. And this is a huge advantage for 500T film, because you can dial up these parameters really easy. So I just changed by 20 the yellow channel. And this is my final result, what I get from the indoors picture with a fully artificial light in the shop and it looks brilliantly well with the all colors intact and the full contrast on this Christmas balls in the center of the shot. I really like the final results and I think this is a really great picture and it's a great add-on to my collection. So once again, thanks everyone who's supporting this channel. You can support me on a coffee website or in a YouTube. In the next videos, I will push forward progress on my color analyzer. But for now, thank you for watching and see you in the next videos. Bye.